Inspiring you to set the marketplace ablaze in partnership with an awesome and limitless God. This is the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast, and this isn't business as usual. Here's your host and Chief Fire Igniter, Shay Bynes. Welcome back to the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. This is your host, Shay Bynes, and our goal here is to inspire you to operate your business completely yielded and in partnership with our awesome and limitless God. Being a kingdom driven entrepreneur is not the same thing as being a Christian who happens to be a business owner. A kingdom driven entrepreneur is motivated by seeing an increase of the kingdom of God through the work they do in business, and they are propelled forward by operating from the truth of Matthew 633. They seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing all things will be added. So that's why we're here. And I'm super grateful that you have joined us today. Today's sponsor is one of our Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Certified Service Providers, Kelly Botter. If your coaching or service-based business revenue is growing, but you know it's time to level up your messaging and revenue to the six-figure level and beyond this year, and more importantly, you have the heart to make a difference in your industry and steward a specific message God has given you, I encourage you to check out the Power of One Framework. The Power of One framework equips you to achieve these results by aligning with your God-given identity and in-season assignments, mastering and articulating your program value, establishing your preeminent positioning, and launching your flagship offer with strategic organic content. To receive your complimentary business assessment to see where the gap is between where you are now and where you want to achieve, visit powerofoneframework.com forward slash benchmark. Now on to today's guest. My guest is Mike Henry. Mike is a former business executive who wanted his faith and his work to be fully integrated in an authentic way. And as is the story of many founders, Mike created an organization that would serve as a solution to the very thing that he was looking for when he was a corporate executive. He founded a nonprofit organization called Follower of One, to help Christians in the marketplace make an eternal difference every day. In this chat, we talk about how he is growing this organization with God, exercising faith, patience, and diligence, and how he's helping people to be what he calls marketplace missionaries. It's not often that I have nonprofit organization leaders on the podcast, but I do from time to time, particularly when they are focused on a mission that is specifically focused on equipping believers in a way that's going to reveal God's glory in the marketplace, whether you're an entrepreneur or a corporate employee. But I think there's lots to learn from anyone who God has put a vision on their heart and they are the founder of something. And so there's lots of goodness to hear from Mike's story. So listen in and enjoy this conversation I had with Mike Henry. Mike Henry, what is going on, my friend? Hey, Shay. It's I, good I, to have you. Thank you for having me. This is exciting. Oh, absolutely. You and I met, I don't know, it might be a couple years now. It's hard to yeah. track the timeline anyway in the midst of this pandemic stuff. It's it like, is. I think everything happened at least two years ago at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But we did I, meet pre-pandemic, I think. Yeah, I think we met pre-pandemic, you know. Uh, we have a lot of uh, mutual uh, friends and fellow fellow workers and, and, you know, faith and business, that intersection of faith Agreed. and the marketplace and all of that stuff. And I think that God's giving you a really interesting uh, vision and dream in terms of what you're doing in the marketplace. And so I thought it would be fun to have a chat with you. One, because I think people should know about it. But two, also because now we usually talk to people who are business owners and you are a you are a head, a founder of a nonprofit organization. But there's so many elements of building that are yes. entrepreneurial in nature, even though a lot of you know, some of the mechanics yes. and the legalities around things look different. And so I want to talk about what that's looked like for you to build, you know, what, what God's yeah. put on your heart to do. So let's start. Well, first let everybody know what follower of one is like, give just kind of a, a brief picture overview about what it actually is that you're doing right now. Certainly follower of one is an online community and our goal is to equip and help every marketplace Christian find resources to help them integrate their faith into their work full time and experience the joy of living our faith full time. It's so easy to get 
buried in the details of work. And our faith gives us life and gives us the ability to make a difference in that. And so I wanted to just help people do that. Yeah. And one of the ways that that you you do that in a few different ways, but one of those core ways, I believe is something that you call mission, like marketplace mission trips, right? That's correct. Okay. So describe what that is. So people know what that is real quick. Well, yeah. So, so, so several years ago, I was actually having lunch with my pastor and I asked him what I always asked him as a business executive. I asked, you know, I'm busy in my job and here we are trying to help one another out. How can I help you? And he said, well, you know, we really need people to go on this overseas mission trip that we have coming up because when people go on a mission trip, that's when they get it. And I even think he used the air quotes. And um, <laughs> That's when and they I, really get kingdom uh-huh, outreach exactly. and, and impact. <laughs> exactly. And I said, well, you know, I think I get it. And I drive 30 miles a day to work. How is that not a mission trip? And uh, we didn't really connect in that conversation that day. It was almost a decade <laughs> later. I was telling a, num- a young millennial friend that story. And he goes, well, why don't you do a virtual mission trip? And I went, you know, that's not a bad idea. Well, it's not a virtual mission trip because we are all going to work. <laughs> right. Even if you sit in your house and you work from home in your PJs or whatever, you're still on a, you can be on a mission trip. And so we put together a two week experience that challenges people to flip their brain over to this model where we're missionaries to our workplaces. And almost to a person, all the feedback that we've gotten, we've done 18 of them so far. Uh, all the feedback that we've received has been very positive that people like the idea. It equips them, gives them languages and ideas for things to do so that they can be present as a Christian again. I always, I always thought my job as a Christian in the workplace was to stay out of trouble until Sunday. <laughs> but this is, this is my, my I want to do something with my faith Monday through Saturday. And so the answer for that is the marketplace mission trip. That is pretty fun. Okay, so you mentioned that you were a business executive. So you uh-huh. worked. So you were working a corporate gig for mm-hmm. that was your career. Yeah, for almost forty years. And so then, when you were having this, because you started this work, what five years ago, right? Two thousand and seventeen. Mm-hmm. Yes. What were you doing at that time when this idea came forth? You're sitting with that. Uh, I think you said that young millennial who dropped this idea as you're sitting with them. What were you doing at that time? Well, I was I was a consultant at that day. So when we actually created Follower of One, I was the vice president of a technology company. And we were a technology service provider. The company still exists. It's a pretty large employer here in the Tulsa area. I was a vice president there. In between when, right after we got the 501c3 approved for Follower of One, um, the music stopped and there wasn't a chair for me at that company anymore. And so I was, at the time I had that coffee with that friend, we were actually, I was doing consulting work on the side. I was doing some IT project work for some friends of mine who have a technology business in town and um, also working on getting Follower One started. Nice, nice. Okay. So I want to talk, I want to go kind of to the beginnings of of starting this, and then we'll kind of move forward. So talk to me about when you get, when you're, you're sitting there and someone says, Hey, how about you do virtual mission trips in the marketplace? Talk to me about the, that moment to the actual doing, like how was God leading you? What did that look like for you? And were there, was there any, uh, was there any tension in any of that for you, or were yeah, you just kind of all, all yeah. it? Talk to me about yeah. how you how things were at that time. Oh yeah, that's those are great questions. So I was totally confused, and you know, I always feel like uh, we joked about. I don't know if I've said this to you, but I always feel like I'm the guy who's outstanding in his field, right? I'm not. I'm nuts. Not I'm outstanding, but I'm outstanding, <laughs> and. Uh, and so here I am with this idea, and I'm also kind of painted in this corner. I almost feel like God painted me in this corner because I'm trying to figure out this ministry. And our goal, our little logo is a 
is an arrow that's pointing up into the right at a 45 degree angle. And it was because I felt like my, if you were to chart my spiritual life, it didn't look like it went straight up into the right. It looked more like a bunch of camels walking across the desert, right? One hump after the other. And I could yeah. look back at some experience, but I couldn't see the progress. Well, so now here I am, and I'm up to my waist in starting this ministry, trying to figure out what, how, to, how it would even be funded or what we would do to equip people. Most of our target customers, for, if you will, are people who feel underutilized by the church. We just, we feel like we have more faith than we're doing anything with. Yeah. And, and so, you know, I'm just trying to get everybody to unpack all the faith that they haven't used lately and put it to work. Yes. And, uh, and so I felt compromised. My friend Jonathan basically gives me this idea. And here it is actually my idea from 10 years earlier. Right. And it's like, oh, I better do this. What am I going to do? Well, our first iteration of this was with a book. I, I love the book and would still recommend it to people. It's called God Space by Doug Pollock. And Doug was one of the first people I interviewed on our podcast. I, I, it's a great book. The subtitle is Where Spiritual Conversations Happen Naturally. And, um, and so I even talked to Doug, and we did the first mission trip where we were coaching people with reading through that book. Well, what I realized after the first mission trip was because we, we base everything on our five daily activities, the first of those daily activities is pray. Yes. And if we pray and go to work, we're on a mission trip. Buying a book became this almost like this obstacle. Why make someone buy a book? Can we not do this as easy as Jesus made it? Pray, go to work. Right. Pray, go to work. <laughs> so... <laughs> So that's so that was our first iteration was me and six of my friends trying to stumble through the book. And, uh, and that was in October of 2018. And then we decided to go with a two week email automation. And the first one of those we did in January of uh, 2019. Nice. So who are you sharing this with? Was this I mean, you were you just out here in social media land just saying, hey, we're doing this thing. Like, how did you? you know, what was that like in the beginning? Is that how you yeah. were sharing? <laughs> well, I think the universal startup tagline is I'll talk to anybody. Right? <laughs> and so, and so follower of one, I'll talk to anybody. Uh, when we started as an online community, immediately the globe is your target market. And, but I was also talking to my church. It was really funny because I can see now over the years, how our pastors have begun to embrace this idea when they were first looking at me like I'd lost my mind. We right. mean, we're going to have a mission trip and we're not buying tickets someplace. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and, but, um, but Jim and Martha Brangenberg were a big help. They were very involved in some of those early mission trips. Other friends, I just people that I'd connected with. We would just invite them, sign up, let's try yeah. it out, give us your feedback, let us know yes. what you think we can do. And uh, what was amazing, what was even more amazing about all this was everybody thought I was a little crazy uh -huh. until the pandemic began. And then all of a sudden, hey, this crazy guy outstanding in his field has this mission trip idea that works even in a lockdown. And it's yeah. like, and I'm going, oh, wow, God. <laughs> <laughs> like what this really is working. You know? And I was just amazed. And pastors would return my calls. And yeah. You know, because now all of a sudden it's not so, in fact, we, we our videos now are on right now media. And it was partly because of the fact that they what do you mean a mission trip that you can do during a lockdown? Yeah, yeah. If so, now now that's piqued their interest to understand uh -huh, exactly. what that can look like, you know. That's really interesting. So tell me, just give me like maybe one or two of your favorite testimonials that came out from something that somebody experienced as a result of signing up and doing this two week experience yeah. where there's these five things that they're doing daily exactly. to just grow in this kind of integration yeah. of the, living their faith out loud as it relates to their work. Tell me some of your favorite stories. Like what are people experiencing? Yeah. So one of them, uh, an executive at a, a logistics company, was on the mission trip. 
She was in a business meeting on Wednesday of the second week. And um, one of her peers kind of challenged this project that she was working on. And she said, you know, if I hadn't have been on the mission trip, I would have snapped back very defensively <laughs> and I would have just kind of shut that down. Right. But instead, I something told me I listened. I just listened and said, thank you. A few hours later that day, they're, she's in the company gym for a yoga class and it's just her and the yoga instructor and in walked the other peer. And she said, we had so much better conversation than that conversation that we had wouldn't have been possible at all had I done what I normally do in those Wednesday morning business meetings. And so, you know, just immediate, it's things like that. And that's actually the challenge that many people have on the mission trip is it really is work. So you don't see miracles and people, you know, all, your whole department, your whole IT department doesn't come to Jesus on Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, right. You know, <laughs> and <laughs> because it's work, but and this, you see and things it, like that because you're looking for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's super good. I think that some people get in the mindset of feeling like it has to look like I'm an evangelist at work. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you're saying. You're not saying a mission trip looks like, hey, I'm coming in here with my yeah. Bible and handing out Bibles and telling everybody about Jesus. That's not what you're saying. You're saying, right. How does, how, what does it look like? You know, I talk about, you know, what does a partnership with God look like at, for mm -hmm. a business owner? It essentially, it's like, what does it look like to partner with yeah. God? Here's some practical things that you can do, you know, some practical yes. rhythms of things that you can do on a regular basis to just have that mindset and that heart postured for the expression, the full expression of your faith, however that looks in your particular context of work. Exactly. Am I, exactly. Did I articulate that? decently Perf perfectly in fact for the listeners the five daily activities are pray appreciate others know what you believe serve others and speak for yourself and only in the fifth one do we talk about speaking at all and then we only talk about speaking when you're asked that's from first peter 3 15. we're in an environment that doesn't care to know about jesus and so until we're asked it's Sometimes it's improper for us to just kind of try and squeeze Jesus into every conversation. Yeah. Let's just live like we're walking with Jesus and listening to him. And then it's his job to figure out who wants to ask us about that today. Yeah, that's really good. I, and I love the, the practical nature of that and the fact that it's kind of like a focus amount. Of, it's like this focused activity that then if someone's like, oh, wow, I'm experiencing this, then they can be like, oh, this is this becomes a lifestyle of just how I work. But you're giving them a taste of what it of what it's like to be intentional exactly. around this. Exactly. And we encourage them in the know what you believe day to practice being able to answer the question, why are you doing this? Because that's what will be asked. If we come in early or stay late to help a coworker, if we do something that's way outside of our job description or way above or beyond what would be expected of us, when we do that, the question isn't, how do I get to heaven? The question is, why are you doing this? Yeah. And so we yeah. have an answer that's two sentences that, that actually credits Jesus for the motivation. I mean, he is the idea. He's where we got the idea. Yeah. Then we've done our job. Yeah, that's really good. Now, kind of going back to the behind the scenes mm -hmm. of what it's like to do this. So you talked about kind of your starting point and what that looked mm -hmm. like. I'm curious to know what what this process has looked like for you to build. I mean, here we, here you are saying this is a this has got to be funded somehow. You're you're seeking God for creative solutions on how to grow it, how to flow with it. You know what to yes. do. Talk to me about some of those kind of key moments or those key breakthroughs along this path that you've had over these past handful of years? Yeah, so that's a great question, too. The most recent key breakthrough was at the end of last year. So I never knew. I've never understood how this would work. I had this idea that we would have a community. I didn't want to charge people for access. I didn't want to create obstacles to us living our faith that are artificial. We don't need any obstacles inside the church. We have enough obstacles outside, <laughs> right? Right. So, 
So, um, so I just fumbled. I mean, our first activity was a four, we still do it. It's a four week kind of an email automation. It's designed for you to get an email every morning to help you think about how you do this. And it was for that, that we came up with the five daily activities. And then the marketplace mission trip turned into this two week exercise. And in every one of these cases, what I've been doing is asking people to donate to support this. And we, my family and I have gone, we've not taken a salary from the ministry until 2022. We're taking a partial small one now because of a grant that we received. That's great. Congrats. But, um, but also I had, I didn't have all this worked out in my mind. I didn't have a written business plan. I felt like the best use of my time every day was to go figure out what didn't work. <laughs> and so go break some and, stuff. Yeah. And there were a lot of days when it was very discouraging, you know, things that seemed like everything didn't work. But um, then last year, we spent in 2021 basically trying to build on the idea. So there are some friends took the mission trip that wanted to run their own mission trip on their own time schedule. And because we were using email automation software for that, it was virtually impossible for me to be able to split myself and do that. But we started praying about this whole idea of making it scalable and how we could put this into some kind of a platform that would allow multiple mission trips to be taking place at the same time. And those mission trips actually encouraging people to be a part of this online community where we could stick around afterwards and help others who have the same occupation as us or the same industry as we do to help us live our faith every day, yeah. do the mission trip once or twice a year, but stay in the online community and help other people make the little light bulb come on. And uh, late last year, when that worked, also in the exercise of writing that grant, those, both those things took place at about the same time. And figuring out the budget for 2022 to make this ask in that grant, I forecasted what it would take, how many people it would take at $10 a month for people to be able to pay this forward. I didn't want to ask anyone to pay to take the mission trip or to be in the online community. But if it's beneficial to them and they would kick in $10 a month, how many people will we need to pay for the folks that I think we need? And when that grant came together, I was just totally blown away. Yeah. I was amazed to see how few people it really took. And, well, we ought to be able to do that. Yeah. And so then I gave those people that grant, which actually showed our budget tripling, over tripling from 2021 to 2022. And, and they kicked in some money toward it. I mean, they I were not that. blown away by it at all. Yeah, and, that's so uh, good. And I love that pay it forward model. It's like, so you're, you experienced something. Was this good for you? Okay, great. Like help this make, make this happen for someone else. You think about like the chosen, you, mm -hmm, are you watching the chosen? You yes, know, it's just yeah, like, and, I had to, I watched the first when I, after I watched the first season, I was like, this was amazing. Oh, uh -huh. I can just pay a little something. And that helps yes. you to continue to make this free and, and help someone else experience that yeah. I'm on board. I love that. I love that idea for kind of how you guys are flowing. Now, this is interesting. You made a comment about how going into this year now, thanks to the grant and all of these things, it's like now you're operating at like, I don't know, I think at like maybe around a quarter million or a little bit more than a mm -hmm. quarter million dollar budget. But talk to me about, you know, going year after year for the first, you know, 2017, 2018, 2019, you know, et cetera. How, how are you functioning in that to keep going. I know for me and Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, it took a long time for it to be profitable enough for even me to pay myself mm -hmm. decently for, mm -hmm. you know, with the work that we were doing. Like it really took, it took a minute. <laughs> and yep. then once we hit it, it really grew. But there was all those, there was those moments that I had, you know, in the midst of that, that, you know, where it's like, okay, just keep being faithful and patient and diligent and just seeking God's heart for. And as long as God, as long as you're with me, I'm here to do it, you know, that type of thing. What has it been like for you? And have you had any points where you've wanted to stop or you thought you should? And, and if so, how did you work through it? Like what have been those tough spots? 
So, so the toughest spots for me are um, just when things don't work out the way you think, right? Nobody's doing this intentionally, but I realize that I'm talking about something that really only exists in my own brain. <laughs> and, um, and God put it there. I really believe God put it there. You and I talked a little bit, but I became a Christian 34 years ago because I was frustrated at work. And my struggles in the workplace have all led into this. I feel like this is part of me. It's not something I can put down. Yeah. Not do. And, um, but it has been, there have been days when I've just been frustrated or, and, uh, you know, what's really cool about our faith that I've learned is that all my screw ups are factored in. You know, that if God wanted somebody else, he could have got them to do it. It wasn't yeah. like he was standing around waiting for somebody to come by. And I just said, hey, why don't you give it to me? No, I think he actually created me to do this. And that my my 30 years of experience, I worked for 31 different people at 16 different companies in my career. There's so many things about my career that feed into this. I can't let it go. And I can look back now. And I can see the things that God's done in the last four or six years, yes, even 10 or 12 years that lead into this. I started a, an online community in 2008 and 2009 that was around leadership development. And um, we never made a lot of money doing it and ended up giving it away to a friend. But I learned a lot of the lessons that go into follower of one now. I'd have never yeah. had any of these ideas. Yeah. He never so, wasted a thing. But, but I, but there's a, I just recently read a book uh, and it wasn't yours. Well, I love your books too. They're <laughs> great help in this as well. Uh, the Gap in the Gain by Dan Sullivan and uh, Ben Hardy. Okay. And, um, and they talk about how we always focus on the gap. We focus on from where we are to some point in the future that, and we're constantly driving into that. And we miss the joy that ex we can experience by looking back behind us and seeing what God has done to date. Yeah. And those things that I see God having done, the feedback forms that we've received, the people who are involved in the community, the folks who are giving us money, the donors and the people who are participating with us. Um, when I see those things, I can't stop. I, I need to ask God for, you know, let me pull over and grab lunch or something. but. <laughs> I, I love that. And that's, I think that's so key to is just looking at what had, like, what, what has God done? What's the testimony exactly. of what God has done? As opposed to, you know, well, where, where, where did I miss? Or mm -hmm. what was I hoping for that I didn't see yet? But what can I look at and just be so grateful that God has done in the midst of this work? And I love how you pointed out just to the practical things, the feedback that you're getting mm -hmm. from the people who who uh, participated. I used to in the early years, mm -hmm. I had a folder in my in my Google in my Gmail account that was called awesomeness folder. Mm -hmm. And anytime I'd get some type of thank you or wow, this really impacted my life or anything that was just like, wow, this is why God has me doing what I do. I would take that and I would put it in that folder. And whenever I was in those weird seasons of like, Lord, am I, I are you, are you sure? Like this, <laughs> do, do I, am I really supposed to be full-time focused on this yeah. right now? Yes. I would go back and look in that folder and over time, over time, it happened so frequently that I didn't even need to put stuff in the folder anymore. Exactly. And it just became the rhythm of just doing it. And I think those looking at those types of things really do help kind of keep the, keep their motor going, you know, and faith yes. and diligence towards the things that God places on our heart. So I love that you gave that, gave that example. And that's yeah, when all that's these things on the way to the ability to get grants and to ability to, to see a vision around how this can be sustainable going forward mm -hmm. with, an, with a different model and all of that. So I'm loving it. I'm loving it. This is super good. And I think about also, Mike, um, just the idea of how, I mean, I don't know who, who the people are that sign up or if these are typically always people who are, you know, corporate employees, or if you have, do you have business owners that have really been engaged with this. What are you experiencing there? 
So we have a cross section of people, and and uh, and I want to focus on that because um, we want this to work for everyone. So yeah. some of the early remote employees would say, "Well, I don't go to work." And I'd say, "Yes, you do." Um, you know, it's and it's not all just workplace. We have some retired people, and we have some stay at home. We've had a couple of stay at home parents who have done it. Many of the examples don't fit outside of those environments, but if they can get past that. We find this way. The first prayer we talk about is Isaiah's prayer. Here I am. Send me. Uh, once we once we do that, then we see God put us to work, even in the lives of people, students that we teach. We have several teachers who have taken the trip. Many people in the medical profession, some in um, elderly care types of assisted living facilities. We had people who work in corporate America, had executives. Um, you know, so it's it works for a cross section of people, and that's was important to me. I felt like much of the faith at work content was aimed at people that had discretionary time. You know, it's aimed at CEOs or entrepreneurs or people who have some flexibility with their time and their resources. And it always irritated me a little bit because I was busy working for someone else. I wanted something that would work no matter what I was doing, and this yeah. would work if you're taking calls in a call center. Right. You can be praying for the people that you're talking to. And yes, all of a sudden you're on mission with Jesus and you experience a lot more joy. Yes. Yeah. I love it. That's so good. So then how do you, for you, like just in your heart, how do you measure, like what does success look like for a follower of one is essentially what I'm asking. So that's a great, that's a great question. So our, um, I've stole a quote. I continue to use a quote of Herb Kelleher's. who's not a bastion of the faith by any means, but he had a quote, think small, act small, and we'll get big. And so if we, if a couple of people go to work praying for their coworkers more today than yesterday, that's a win for us. Yes. And so I want to remember those wins. We also need to get sustainable. Um, uh, Vicki and I can't, continue not taking a salary, which is part of the reason why our board agreed to give us a partial contribution, this partial payment this year. Yeah. Um, but we still have quite a bit of money to raise. And so uh, I'm asking God to show me how to do this. Clearly, he's got me into this mess and you <laughs> better do something about it. <laughs> and you'll have more staff this year. I think you told me that I think you told me before that you had one person working with you last year, but this year you'll have four. Is that, was that? Yeah, we have have three additional people that are helping out. So we've done a lot of contract work, Yeah, but we have three people. We have a leadership team of six and we have a board of eight. Okay. And so a couple of people on the leadership team now are being compensated for part-time commitments to areas of responsibility. Yeah. So they're bought in as a volunteer and a leader of the organization, but they're also being compensated for their work. And so, yeah, our goal is to have six to eight employees and basically four years from now at $10 a month, a person or something small for a business, like maybe a hundred dollars a month for, you know, for a bit for a business or a ministry or something like that, or whatever the number is, give what you can kind of a thing. We get four or 5,000 people doing this and it pays the bills. Yeah. And so our goal this year is a hundred. You know, we need to add a hundred new people in this model this year. Can we get a hundred people? And I'm who will I'm pay it forward you. essentially. Exactly. Yeah, that's good. Okay, one other question for you. Sure. Pretty personal question. But when you are seeking God, you know, around the work of follower of one right now, what's what's he saying to Mike right now? <laughs> Um, so my, uh, I had a friend who suggested to me a month ago that I get a word for 2022. <laughs> I never was one of those guys. Yeah. So my word for 2022 is trust. And that was my friend's recommendation. And what God is saying to me is you didn't start this and you're not going to finish it. And I don't know why you think you have to do all this work. <laughs> and so, um, uh, you know, this is, 
this is not up to me i i tend to see myself as the answer to every question and it can't possibly be right we're an online community we want to be an online community and so it's time for this is hopefully this is a year where we see people step in and do things differently than i would have done them yeah because we're all reporting to the same guy yeah it's good and so so it's a it's it's about trusting god daily in the yes. midst of all of this stuff yeah yeah and knowing that you know you're showing up and doing your part but he does a whole lot of heavy lifting <laughs> exactly well and you know entrepreneurs we all know there's stuff that you have to make happen that's right you have to be able to pay your bills and you have to be able to do certain things and so you know god show me what you, what how i do these things yeah and um you know many of my answers are i will <laughs> you know <laughs> It's it's always funny when you get that response, right? It's uh -huh. like, but what I was actually asking for a specific answer for like right now, uh -huh, exactly. not for I yeah. will. <laughs> that's right. But you said that the word was trust. Trust. That's exactly yes. right. I I get scared praying about it. You know, I I confess that I some of what I believe he's having me pray about and step into. I'm nervous about all all yeah. you know, but um. My wife used to always tell me when I was working for other people, you get in these tough meetings and things, and my wife is the silent kind of backbone behind all this. She would always tell me, she said, look, make sure they fire the right Mike Henry. <laughs> you know, I need to do what the Holy Spirit wants me to do, and then the consequences are his. Yes. Yes. That's good. Your wife's <laughs> a smart, your wife's a smart woman. Yeah, well, you know, I, I'm always worried that one of these days she's going to figure out what she did marrying me and <laughs> rearrange things. But other than that, yes. So silly. <laughs> Mike, you have been such a delight to talk to. Uh, uh, where do people go if they want more information about this? Where do they head? So you can find much of what we're doing at our website, followerofone.org. If you'd like to join our online community, there's no charge. It's at community.followerofone.org, and you can also find it on the landing page. And, and you have to join the community to take the Marketplace Mission Trip. There's always another Marketplace Mission Trip happening. It doesn't matter when this airs. We do six a year. Okay. And so go into the online community, request membership in the online community. You'll get accepted. Then you can uh, request access to the next Marketplace Mission Trip. And join us on this thing and watch what God does. Yeah. And uh, and to me, I'm Mike at followerofone.org, and I'm Mike Henry Sr. on every social media platform I've found so far. Uh, <laughs> I haven't got on TikTok yet. I was just about to ask you. <laughs> I no, promise you, I was just about to ask you, wait, are you on TikTok, Mike? Uh, no, I'm at my limit, but uh, <laughs> I probably should go get Mike Henry Sr. over there with a little link that says, hey, go. Go back to LinkedIn. <laughs> <That's so funny. laughs> Mike, I appreciate you. Love what you're up to. And thanks for sharing with us today. Hey, I'm grateful for you and the, the difference that your podcast makes, the, the overlap that I see from all these different ministries and all the podcasting that you're doing, the people that you talk to. It's just exciting to see what God's doing in our world, isn't it? And it is it seems to be snowballing. And so we get to take part. That's right. Kingdom of God ever increasing. And we get to do this. Yep. I'm All grateful. Right. Thank you. You too. Absolutely. Take care, Mike. Great chat with Mike Henry. And now I have with me Mr. Bynes, Phil Bynes, our CEO of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, and my dear husband. How's it going, Phil? It's going well. Oh, that's good. Well, it's time for Mr. Bynes' takeaways. So what you got? Well, I got a few things. I got three things today. Let's just call it what it is. I have All three right. things, okay? The first thing I have is um, sometimes the things that God leads you to do will make you stand out like a misfit, but it only looks that way because you're ahead of your time. Yeah, that's good. I thought that was so funny when he said that, you know, uh, being outstanding, but not like outstanding as in phenomenal, but like outstanding. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's a really common uh, feeling that we have is 
kingdom driven entrepreneurs. So yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, number two, and this is a, a direct quote, at least as, as best as I can remember how he said it. Um, it is improper to try to squeeze Jesus into every conversation. Selah, let that be a mouthful, right? <laughs> and my my retort to that, or my addition to that is allow him, meaning Jesus or the Holy Spirit or Father God, to lead you in all situations. Yeah. You know, if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in every situation, he'll let you know when it's when it's proper to mention his name or to mention his attributes or whatever it is he wants you to mention. So I thought that that was good. good and sense. number three, God is always training us, but we only recognize the growth when we take the time to look back. And this kind of came from um, a portion of conversation where he was talking about um, a concept that he got out of a book, you know, about the gap that you always see in front of you. But, you know, if you take the time to look back at the gap from where you came, you'll be able to see all the wonderful things that God has done and, and trained you. And even the things that look like mistakes, right. you, you'll be able to see what he was showing you in that time. In that yeah. Season. So good. Those are good. Good stuff. Well, before we take off on this episode, we are in the midst right now of our kingdom driven entrepreneur masterclass live virtual event that started Monday and January 17th and it's going through this Friday. So if you have not registered, participation is free, but registration is absolutely required. If you want to join us, it's not too late. You just head over to www.kdemasterclass.com and you can join us. Basically all throughout this week, I'm teaching on a handful of just core principles, just some, some just like core teaching and mentoring moments, answering some questions, around some key things around becoming, growing, thriving as a kingdom-driven entrepreneur, which I will continue to say is very different from being a Christian who happens to be a business owner. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Even if you join now, you can have access to the replays during the time of the masterclass. So you haven't missed a thing if you haven't joined us yet. So head on over, register again. Participation is free, but registration is required, www.kde, as in Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, kdemasterclass.com. Phil, anything that you want to share before we take off? No, nah, no. Just that I hope to see you guys up in the masterclass. Um, I'm going to be popping in and, and taking a look at some faces, and maybe I'll say something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll make, be allowed to say appearance. <laughs> I might make a verbal appearance, you know, but that we'll see. Funny. I look okay. forward to seeing you guys though. Yeah. So looking forward to seeing you guys. We do the sessions on Zoom. So we, so we do get to see and interact with you all. And it's just a good time together of learning, sharing. We also have this Facebook group. It's a bit of a pop-up group because it doesn't exist outside of the master class, but it allows just for even between sessions for people to engage, share with one another. We're doing some prizes as people share their takeaways. So all kinds of goodness is going on. So Come on in and join us. Again, I'll give the shout out to the URL one more time. It's www.kdemasterclass.com. We will hopefully see you in the masterclass, but we will definitely be back next week for the next episode of the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. See you later. Thanks for joining us on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we encourage you to subscribe and spread the word. And don't forget, you can gain access to even more resources, plus a thriving community of fire starters by visiting our website at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com.